this guy is awesome. Yes, I will try to do it word for word. So, I guess pretend like you didn't say this. Our presentation is very similar to Lisa's. But instead of giving you the structure of uh, numbers of six and fours, hopefully in the next few slides, I'll give you the structure to build your own identity. Um, I'm not going to uh, so step one, like I said, is a bit of a precursor, it's mostly for people who maybe have never done an identity design before. So the first thing you're going to do is start training your eyes. Um, like I said, if you want to be a movie critic, you have to watch a lot of movies. No one's going to take you seriously unless if you've watched one movie and then start writing articles about it. They want to see that you've watched a million movies. Um, that's the same way with logos, really, uh, identities, where the first one you do is going to be horrible. I don't care. I don't care how old you are, I mean, the first one you do is horrible, and the second one, and then probably the first 100 are pretty bad, um, and they get better and better, and then uh, once you have all that experience, and you go to sit down and do it, you can still do a really bad identity, <laughs> and that just happens. Um, but hopefully, as you get more experience and start training your eyes, it gets easier and easier. Um, so having good taste is obviously the first step. Um, and if, you don't, if you're not sure if you have good taste, you know, find out what uh, it looks like. This is a great blog. Um, if you're not even interested in design, if you're interested in startups, businesses, uh, brand new is a really great blog. Basically, some guy just started blogging about identities, you know, 15 years ago, and now it's a, kind of a, his own business. Um, I think this works where I can scroll. Yeah, there's not that much extra content. But the content on this web page is really good. Um, I suggest you subscribe to it where they, he analyzes new identities, so new businesses, um, just talks about their general structure, breaks it down very easily and very honestly. Or you might have something like this, where <coughs> a very classic old brand, and they just update their uh, identity a little bit. Now, for most people, it doesn't really, nobody really cares, but from the design community, people like freak out, you know. Like one thing changes and it doesn't, it's not really inter interesting, they like, I think it's the end of the world. I mean, a lot of people who are mm -hmm. iOS developers here have probably seen the backlash to iOS 7. And like, oh my god, there's different radius of things, and you know, that it's a really big deal. Um, so this guy pretty much breaks things down for them very simply, and I think it's a really good way to train your eye to identities. Um, so definitely suggest uh, checking this out. So step two, uh, acquire an unfortunate subject. Like I said, the first hundred you do will probably be very bad and you shouldn't be paid for them. I mean, um, designers, we do, we do get paid for the first probably 100 we do. Thankfully, not that much. Um, so, I mean, fine, anything. This is Uncle Jim's cool cleaning business. You know, you have your uncle who needs a logo and you're a pretty poor designer. You end up designing families' logos all the time. Um, I'm sure. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the That's thing. Fun. It's the whole thing. That is the thing. That's the thing. You got gym, you got pool care. <laughs> yeah, Futura extra bulk, italics, what's that? It's not the most beautiful thing, but it gets the point across. And yeah. you know what? Um, this is later in the presentation, but for the audience, you know, I mean, it, it, it works well enough. Um, but obviously, 10 years down the road, you're probably not going to be designing a gym's pool care anymore. Um, well, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I play like games. You have, like, basically, you have a, a friend's hobby, and they have no money. But they have, for some reason, they want a t-shirt. So basically, you have you know, your friend's online gaming guild. You know, you know, you know it's got dragons and swords, and our names are you know, like, Bloodlust Brothers. You know. So this is, this is where you have someone who's going to love whatever you want. And whatever you give them, they're going to love it. And that's the best. Um, because you get to learn that lesson um, where like, you give it to them, and you think you're just flying high. Because the first logos, the three logos you did were horrible because you got paid for them. This one, you didn't get paid anything, you're like, this is the best. Like, when nobody gives me any parameters, and they just love it. And then you, you know, design your next logo, and somebody else hates it again, because you didn't really learn too much from this. But it's a good exercise. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have your, your business idea for uh, pretzel sharing app. So, you're doing your own business stuff, that's a good exercise as well, because once again, you're the client. Uh, who's going to disappoint you? I mean, you won't disappoint yourself. Um, so like yeah, like everything in this world, you need experience to do it well. So start right away. Um, so when I decided to do this presentation, uh, of course, if you, if you want any design work to be done, um, just give your meet up with your designer friend, give him a beer, and then just get really ganky and say like, yeah, I got this idea, and I really need a logo, and they'll always say yes. 
I mean, most of the time I would just say, yeah, like, ah, oh, it sounds fun. Uh, it, it never is fun, but it sounds fun. <laughs> um, so, of course, I said yes to Georgie's uh, presentation. And uh, I go to a gym with Georgie and Tawomi and Paul, and people have been kind of bugging me because uh, I'm the only designer there to do a t-shirt for them. So well, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to do a presentation, and I'm going to design a t-shirt. Yes. Uh, so, this oh, is the gem we want to oh. This is the gem we want to and One description of a very good logo, of a good solution, may not be the prettiest thing, is uh, we say it's hard working. It may not be the most beautiful thing, but if it's able to be simple and reusable, we call it hard working. Because it's doing so many things, but it's so simple. This is an example of what I was saying uh, of a logo that's trying very hard. <laughs> Not very hard working. Um, so it's got Chikara, it's got a Tokyo skyline, it's got a very swash fit around it, it's got, you know, it's got a lot of things going on. It's not a bad logo and it certainly served them very well. I mean, there's a, the, the business has boomed, maybe not because of the logo, but you know, it's good enough. <laughs> People understand what's going on now. So this was, uh, this was the, this is kind of like a presentation slash case study. So step three, research. Um, Knowing, immersing yourself in the brand is probably the most important thing uh, about identity design. So, usually this is a good thing if you're designing something for yourself, like if you're, if you're into online games and you know everything about this game and you know everything you need to know. But usually you're, you're doing something for something you don't know anything about. Um, whether it's a pretzel, pretzel sharing business or gym's pool service. So you have to do a lot of research. Um, I go to CrossFit a lot, uh, so that's a lot of my research, so I felt pretty confident. I mean, you can do simple, simple things like Google image searches. I mean, it was kind of a dirty thing to do maybe five, six, seven years ago, but I mean, now Google's so amazing that you can get so much content um, and very high level identity content just from a Google search. So I mean, if you're just starting out, Google search can't hurt. Once again, you can research the competition, and then the CrossFit kind of identity is very homogenous. I mean, as you can see, you can, you, there's pages and pages of these things. And of course, the people that we go to the gym with, um, they, come in, they come with t-shirts, and they all look very similar. They're all black and red, they're all blood, <laughs> blood killer, crazy, uh, uh, kind of very macho type stuff. Um, so whatever you're researching, once again, you can simply do a, Google image search and see who your competitors are because you don't want to create the same thing that somebody else has done. Um, that's kind of the worst, especially when you don't realize that and the client knows it. Um, and you research the application. Um, in this case, I mean, it was, it's a logo, but it's really just for t-shirts and stuff. So whatever you're doing, I mean, a lot of people get very focused on um, the object, the, the identity itself, and kind of forget the application. They think it needs to be really timeless, and it needs to have, you know, the all the all the lockup of the you know the title of the business, and you know it can't be abbreviated. It's got to say everything it needs to say right here. What if it's depending on the application? I mean, use it for a business, a new business where you need to have an identity for business cards and on the website, and that that's kind of like the big umbrella case. But in most cases, there's probably a specific application. So in this case, it's, it's mostly a T-shirt. Um, and most importantly, understand your audience. Um, so I think about 30% of a designer's career is probably finding different ways to say this. Um, because often we come to client meetings or discussing it with a local gym or a friend of the online gaming deal. Um, we show them these ideas and they don't like them. And that happens. And they don't like them because of very specific things personally. Um, and in the end, they are the client, and they will certainly, hopefully, know the audience the best, but sometimes you have to remind them that they themselves are not the audience. Um, this usually works. Sometimes it doesn't. Some people just want to have a little, a little input, and that's why they are asking to do things. In this case, um, I know the audience pretty well. Chicago CrossFit is, uh, CrossFit is, a, I think it's called the Sport Fitness. It's one of the first CrossFit gym in Tokyo. It's locals and foreigners, very casual. And it's Japanese power. Yeah. So we're designing, we're designing t-shirts for these people. We spend, most, we spend most of their time shirtless, 
Uh, so repping, I mean, repping your gym is kind of a matter of pride. Um, you don't really wear the, you don't wear the shirt for like you, know, you don't wear your own shirt to the gym. You do sometimes. Is he most the other front? Do these people don't need t-shirts because they're <laughs> Well, well, after they they do all they need t-shirts. After this, they put t-shirts on. <laughs> they have their t-shirt on, and then they have to take it off. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, they, they just torn it. <laughs> so the t-shirts come off. Yes. It's actually a good idea. It's actually to print something on the inside. <laughs> ripping it off and get the message. All right. So step four. This is the scariest step. <laughs> and that's sketching. Um, Luis, Luis was a good example. I mean, many people. Maybe start out drawing, but never don't don't really draw anymore because they think they need to be able to draw something very specific or organic, and that their style isn't going to be good enough. Um, so so usually that's why people approach, you know, their 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 nephew who's just entered his high school to do things because they're they're scared to start themselves. Um, but I don't think you really need drawing skills. It certainly helps to have them. But the, the essence of identities is, is really good ideas and good research. Um, so you decide, the first thing you do is you dissect the subject. I mean, Shikara, uh, the very, that's, that's the impossible word. I'm not sure what it's from. And we kind of have a Japanese Tokyo identity. Um, and I've seen different workshops do this, and I've seen videos do this where you just use what you know to build it. You don't have to draw. Um, a lot of designers will say, like, oh, you need to have a sketchbook. There's certainly a lot of these services where they, you know, they show you your final logo and they show these pages and pages of beautiful little pencil drawings. And that's great, it's beautiful. But I don't think everyone needs to do that. <laughs> um, as long as you get to the same place, that's, uh, I think that's the whole point. Um, it's, it's great to see process too, I mean. Um, but I mean, you can, you can use Legos to really build an identity depending on what you're, you're trying to do. Um, I mean, if you're, I mean, I want to like abstract it to the point if you're a carpenter, like you can do it with wood. But, <laughs> um, so use what you know. Um, keep it simple. I mean, people would probably complain that this looks like a billion other logos. <laughs> um, and that is certainly a problem, but for whatever this is, it does it really well. And that's one thing great about that blog too, is people are so quick to, to judge and say, oh, it's copying this, oh, it's gonna... Sure it is, but it does, it does what it does well. Good. It's, it's just good enough. And if the content's good, then people won't really care. <laughs> and, you know, rely on your newly acquired good taste. <laughs> um, so, in the sketching step, is you just produce, I mean, I didn't do these, but I mean, you just produce as much as possible. Um, you want to sketch everything. If you can't, even if you can't draw, you just keep copying things, you keep you copy other identities and you stick the, the words Jim's pool business on it. You find you try everything. Um, because if you don't have a good idea, this is the best way to find one. And even if you do have a good idea, it's best to explore all those other things. Because all of a sudden, you know, when you start, you're like, yeah, I kind of have the best idea right now, but I'm going to do these things. And about an hour in, you're like starting to doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, by two hours in, like you have no faith in your original idea. And the things that you've done, you actually have no faith in either, and you're completely lost. That's okay, because you've got to step five, and this is the hardest step. <laughs> and that's throwing everything you've done away. Um, I'm in a firm believer, and this is not just identity design, that um, the first solution you come to is usually the worst. And I think that's it's, it holds true for a lot of design, but specifically for identity. Um, identity work is so kind of intricate, and there's like a, I mean, there's a, there's a moment where it's kind of magical, so if you go to that first first uh, immediate response, that's the easy thing, and that's what everyone will do. You give them the research, you give them all the all the tools that you just did, and you'll end up in the same place unless you're an identity genius. I mean, if everyone goes through the same steps, everyone will come up with planet bringing with a circle. Um, so the first all those sketches you did, you just gotta divorce yourself from them and decide that those were really good experience and good research, but it's not what you need. Um, so yeah, keep calm. These aren't the George you're looking for. And it, and it is really hard. It's just as hard as taking the bad news from a client that they don't like what you've done. I mean, stepping away and not even showing those things 
um, is even harder. So step six uh, is the easiest step. And that's just breathing. That's just taking some time. Um, I don't think there's a lot of things in this world we can do that we can kind of crunch and force and like grind our way through. And creative work, um, I think, is one of them. Uh, specifically, identity design because once again, I think it's uh, mostly about problem solving, and it doesn't take much to actually make the thing. Um, it's not like redoing the floor in an office where you can kind of just work through it. Um, identity design really requires a little space. So work on something else. Don't work on. I mean, if you're just this is your first identity project, you now that you've thrown everything away, you know, do something else for a little bit. Um, because once again, you're kind of divorcing yourself from those ideas. And while if you start immediately again, you might be, you might want to start pulling some of the things that you've already done. But if you give yourself some space, it's like you already, you, not only do you know the, um, <coughs> all the research and all these good ideas that you've thrown away, you have a completely, com completely clean slate, and you have everything you need to know. And you, you've thrown away all the bad ideas. So all, anything you do is going to be good. Okay. <laughs> uh, so step seven. Okay. Uh, this is the, the other part of the, the case study. So we're going to take everything after you've taken your break, and you've, you've done your research, you've taken your break, you come back to it. And so we have, you know, Chicago CrossFit. This is just a, one of the weights we use. It's very classy in the community. You probably, if you're not in CrossFit, you've probably never seen one of these things. But like, uh, they're like the torture device of every single gym in the world. They're called kettlebells. Um, and you take the things you know too, like CrossFit, Strength, Japan, being awesome. And you add your awesome idea. Um, this is just something that I came up with a while ago. Um, and one of our friends actually made it. Um, I was kind of joking that we were having this, this kind of Japanese um, competition um, where someone could take the kettlebell, which is the wrong thing I kind of paint like Dharma. I really like this idea because it's Japanese, it's CrossFit, um, and there's kind of this cultish attitude with uh, CrossFit, and it's like kind of realizing your fitness goals. I think that's a, it has a really good alignment with the whole idea of filling in Dharma's eyes, you know, for a wish, and when it's realized, um, you can fill in the other eye. So you have all these parts. This is where the heart, I mean, this is where the talent comes from. And this is why the first hundred logos you make will just suck. Um, you got to make it sing. And that's just no easy task. I mean, everyone, like, I don't have a very elaborate sketchbook. Um, one thing I do when I'm, I'm designing identity is I'm doing kind of mood boards and I'm pasting things. And a lot of time, the most I'm, time I'm spending working on it are when I'm you know, riding home on my bicycle or taking a shower, because it doesn't take that much to think of the idea. It's just the execution is actually very, very quick. Um, I don't need a computer to think of what I want to do. So once I sit down on the computer, it's basically just kind of this uh, tree. I mean, I, all my ideas start to tree out in, in different directions. But this one was very specific because I've been thinking about it very, for a while. So I just showed some, some process stuff that I was doing and how it's kind of developing over time. Um, so this is where I ended up. Uh, uh, yeah. So I mean, choosing fonts, that's, that's just something that comes with having good taste. I don't, I don't think it's the best font in the world. I did this last night. There's probably a lot of improvements to make on it. But it's good enough. And like anything you make in the world, whether it's a website or a logo, there's, I mean, you can spend more time to improve it, or you can kind of just get it out there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have the kettlebell. I have Dharma, I've got the Chikara logo. I think that while it's not as accessible for everyone, I think it's a hard working solution. And I think that one of the most interesting things about identity design, um, if you're really designing for application, is how explicit it really needs to be. In this case, since it's more about repping, uh, repping, our, repping our gym, there's a story behind this, but it's not ex exactly accessible to everyone. But I feel like us being part of one of the first CrossFit gyms in Tokyo, we have a very kind of special story. So when it comes to the gym, we can kind of talk about CrossFit, we can talk about Tokyo, we can talk about Chikara CrossFit, we can talk about Japan and this kind of story behind Tarama and, and kind of really realizing your fitness goals. So, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>
Nice. Yeah, very nice. Great idea, best idea. 
That's what she. There's, there's no, hundred. No, no, no. Yeah, of course. You could have another twenty logos which were even as good as this one. Sure. Probably, if you keep on working on it. Hmm. So I think logos could be like thousand things. And what you present is the one that you feel more comfortable with, or you like it more personally hmm. at the end of the day because of the designers. Yeah. But in the end, it's it's really the story. Yeah. If, right. you're, if you're happy with the story, right. which I mean, I, like I said, I, I think this is not accessible for, for many people who are CrossFit. I mean, it, it looks like CrossFit and it has a feeling of CrossFit, but I don't really understand it. But I think the story is strong enough that makes it a good, yeah. a good identity. But once again, if I threw it away and started over and, and tried to do something more accessible, I think I could probably come up with something. Yeah, that's what I mean. So that doesn't make, make this one worse. It's just it's another solution. You can tell but, it thousand ways. But I still think it's your job to make it to make everyone understand that it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, like everything in creative, um, whenever you do something, you should be able to, I mean, sell every aspect of it. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of what design is. Um, when you're when you're just being when you're creating something, and somebody asks you, like, why did you make this decision? Mm. Um, another, this is the other seventy percent of being a designer is like coming up on the spot, like why you did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's well, a great difference to. Uh, towards development because you know Mark and I have been working together for what two years or something <laughs> on one thing but it was always this box this obviously this 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 uh, conflict moment where he wanted to try everything to test and to double double check and I was like you know just do whatever right? <laughs> it's okay but to get, <laughs> relax <to get. laughs> I kill it and it's really interesting how these two forces uh even each other to, to get back to your question, though, I, mean, uh, I think it goes back to that story, but like reasoning out all your design decisions, and if you can say everything was in, was to honor, you know, um, your audience, then you really can't argue with that. Um, yeah. And of course, every, there's always going to be some client that's going to disagree with some part of it, but you know, you just keep hammering that nail, and if they if they ask you to do another round, then you know, you do another round, and you come back with something slightly different, but you know, uh, the same story. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just wondering in terms of, um, I mean, this isn't um, the kind of thing that maybe you would do this for, but like, you know, for a, for a, a large brand or a mid-sized brand, would you take uh, your design that you think is the best or possibly a number of designs, take them out into the field and, you know, um, show them to people and get feedback from them? Mm -hmm. And if so, if so, how would you do that? That's sort of difficult to test for, and then it could succeed or fail on the technical side. Like, is it you know readable from two meters out or four meters out, right? And that's extremely testable. So, yeah. you know, I would say that like you don't want to test on the, the, the inspirational side of it, but if it's a logo that as a tool needs to survive in all these different conditions, you can certainly test whether that font is readable at four meters if. You know, it's not readable. Then you know, it just is going to break down. Uh, you know, for the client, and then you know, that's a situation where you would you would definitely want to test. You know, at least the, the legibility aspect of it. So, I mean, I think you know, a large part of deciding what to test and when to test is deciding like on what, like on what grounds does it need to succeed or fail. You know, if it just needs to sort of make people kind of laugh and be excited or whatever, like. You know, maybe that's not something you need to test. You can kind of just show it around to buddy. Like, yeah, that's kind of cool. But but that's testing, right? I mean, well, at least in my mind, that's. that's I, I guess so. <laughs> it's yeah, it's much more quality. I, I wasn't talking about this full on formal study, but it's you know. Yeah, but although you know, like if that. the larger the stakes and the, the wider the applications, the more that testing starts to be valid. You know. But I, I do have a, a question for you guys. I mean, the developers. Uh, I've I've done something for Booking.com, and Booking tests everything. I don't know if you know. I mean, they seem to test every every single button and every single thing. They make like four models and they put them in the wild and then they check how people react to the way it's done. Wow, well, I'm so sorry, but the website is shit. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to book a hotel, it was hell. And I thought, okay, all this testing, what for? Why don't you just. It's shit, but it's it? money making shit. Yeah, I, was going to say, well, I use booking.com and then I use it again the week after because if you do the design wasn't great but the experience of booking was pretty simple. Really? Like uh, okay. okay, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I used it too recently. Huh? I used it too recently. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked? Yeah. Okay. Kind of annoying but it worked. 
I don't know. I think I think the, the more you test and the more you try to measure things, the more they go, they're gonna uh, escape through your fingers. And this obsession with measuring everything doesn't go anywhere. But that's my own personal, very personal opinion. It's not on tape. Keep it on tape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, if you think about all, you know, how it kills people, all the whole life of everything. Well, I think if you think about how people used to create, you know, specific art, you know, hundreds of years ago. I mean, that was a very kind of bubble process. Besides, you know, being inspired by other artists, and now we have kind of the opposite. Yeah. That, and that's the testing and like where every, nothing's a bubble and everything is considered. Like that's, I mean, both of those are extremes and. Both of them can certainly produce um, pretty amazing things, but only in extreme cases. So, I mean, like in a, anything, you need, you need balance, you need a bit of creativity, you need a little, little, little room to breathe, and then maybe some testing and research, you know, knowing the audience. You can't just expect to you know, come up with the best thing. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think architecture is a great point of comparison. Like, you know, you could create a building that is exactly to code and will never kill anybody but it's fucking ugly as hell, right. you know, because <laughs> you tested it, but there was no inspiration involved in the process. But then you could create a building which is completely gorgeous, and you could take right. a million beautiful photos of, but, you know, it's going to fall apart and, and just cause right. you know, so massive we, injury. We so set for, the, for this balance, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. Okay. Little, uh, yeah, totally agree. Totally testing agree. at the right point in the, in the creative process is really healthy and yeah. actually allows whatever yeah. inspiration you've done to it to survive right. much right. longer than it would without the system. Yeah, but I, I think that the whole of developing world, mm -hmm. the, the, the developers world, sorry, is too much based on test and too, too little yeah. on, on passion and on love and on gut feeling. I, I think that this, like mm -hmm. these things we're doing here is really good for that, yeah, yeah, yeah. to get back the balance. Bit. So I think uh, if you can get the gut feeling, emotional agreement with the, I mean yourself and with the client, mm. then I think that's kind of a strong thing that kind of express the stories from the logo or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it's just it's like written in the air. It's things yeah. that you cannot point with the finger. You cannot measure. I have an no, answer for you. Though. I mean, you're talking about art, and mm. we, they, the, you know, there's a difference between functionality in, in, in this context. One thing can be like something that is very functional and very, very beautiful, and something that is just beautiful, just the nature of it. Like your art, for example, you cannot use it. I mean, other than admire it, understand it, and identify yourself with what you do. But sometimes you have to create something like a car or something like an industrial design. So you, how you balance beauty and function? That's it. That's what what we what we're talking about. Yeah. Because this has to have function. Not only has to have the beauty of it. That's right. the that's the one thing I think. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely, definitely the, the, the testing can let you make incremental improvements, but it can't give you a breakthrough. That's a good point. So, well, mate, the, so the breakthrough yeah, hopefully yeah, comes yeah. from what, what, what the experience of the person or right. people involved in the project. Because <coughs> you never know. Well, you have to yeah. put it out and yeah, but the more right. you test, the yeah. more chances you have of getting a breakthrough. Yeah. So like if you if you if you design one massive monolithic tool. And then you release it, and then no one cares. Then you've got a problem. Whereas, if you if you test as many potential breakthroughs as you can, you're more likely to hit that one, or possibly more. Sure. I, I, I mean, this may be a sort of waste of everyone's time, but I used to work for a political consultancy, and we used to do these uh, wall of uh, mold tests where we would go out and make a little booth, and then we run a, a, an advertisement, or not an advertisement, but yeah, basically an advertisement for uh, a political, uh, political candidate, and we would have a message where we tested every single word. We could switch words around. We could really go through a lot of people and get a lot of feedback. But I think one of the fundamental problems of that is the, the classic thing about you know whether whether the message is wrong or you just haven't gotten through to people. And you can argue that they don't care about this, but I think if it's gun control, uh, you haven't explained properly why you are for gun control. Or you can say, well, these people are not for gun control, so you should change your message. So that's a it's a t totally different world. I understand that, but I think when one of the, the crossover points came when there were a lot of uh, uh, magazines that wanted to test the covers. They wanted to test, like let's say, four different magazine covers and see which one was going to sell the best, which colors were the best, which kind of you know primaries were going to work. And that never really clicked. We really couldn't really figure out why. Well, I think they do. Hmm? I work in the magazine industry, and I tell you, you go to a magazine uh, uh, office and you have all the covers on the wall with. Uh, note with post-its saying how much they sold of each number, yeah. uh, each issue, and they will go like pink sells more than red, 
and green and yellow is in views yeah. and uh, let it die. Right. They think it's a, it's a, it's that's a science. True. That's true. That's what they thought. But I, from, from the experience that I had was there was no real good correlation. We would test, let's say, four, oh, five, six, not. seven. Yeah, but it just not. never made no, sense. No, no, no. Wait, there's not. Yeah. But still, they try to oh, yeah, grasp yeah. this thing, oh, this course. magic formula to create a perfect cover. And I've been fighting like years. Yeah. I still do. There is no perfect cover, and it's not, there is no rules, and they hire me to tell them how to make the perfect cover. And I tell them, the first thing I say is, no rules, I'm not going to tell you because there is no But maybe, way it's, the, maybe it's the same thing as with politicians, you just need to get through to people, and maybe the, the, the design that you have or the idea that you have, if it's strong enough, it doesn't matter how it tests, it's going to Exactly, work. but how, what is strong? And that's why they say, well, yeah, we know that yellow is more strong than... Sometimes, you know, when it was summer, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think that the, I think the, Ob the Obama campaign was a good example of like, yeah. how, like, identity reduction works, worked wonders. I mean, their whole, whole campaign initially was just change. And, like, you could say there's so many negative things to say that change, change is scary, but, like, since it was one word, like, the misinterpretation of it was, like, you know, it was all over the board. But you, whatever you wanted to believe, that's what it was. I mean, you, you can test that all you want. You can test that all you want, but you got to have faith, and it's going to resonate with people. Because yeah. uh, of course, like, yeah, tr can you imagine them testing that with people? Like, okay, we've changed. <laughs> you know, people are like, I changed what? You know? uh, and some people are like, oh, it's you know, the most amazing thing ever. But I'm sure the people who, I mean, they, they really embraced a lot of design thinking in, in Obama's campaign. Yeah. But, uh, at the yeah. same time, that campaign had the crap tested out of it for like, sure. campaign contribution amounts. Sure. Really? Um, like that article about the yeah, system yeah. they put it there were, I mean, it was, was amazing. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, posts kind of dis dissecting of that as well. Like the difference that wording would make like in the, in the hundreds of thousands, I think, maybe even the millions of dollars range mm -hmm. from how you would the email to get campaign contributions. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I mean, I think this comes. So it was a bet. To... I mean, it was a bet that, 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 that they thought they knew what people wanted, you know. And to bet it all on one word is a pretty big deal. And you can't. I mean, you can test was, it. That was the breakthrough thing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, that was the thing that had to come from somebody's inspiration and exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that was the identity. I mean, that's what he ran on. So. All right. Do we have one more? We have one more. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Oh.